Hello everyone everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is April 17th. We've been studying about the season of the Holy Spirit is for right now. Now you may be surprised to know that the Spirit is involved in the unsaved world just as much as he's involved in the saved world. What do you mean by that, Brother Bob? Well, he works among the unsaved at all times. One, he's trying to get them born again. He's trying to put people in front of him, and, and he moves upon the believer's hearts. You know, how many times have you been walking down the street and said, eh, we don't want to go that way. Let's go. That's the Holy Spirit ministering to your spirit. And what he's trying to do is maneuver people in front of the unsaved world, in front of your friends, your family, your loved ones who are unsaved. He's sending his labors across the people that they will listen to, people that respect. Some people, they won't. It may be a stranger just walks up to us and says, God says, straighten up. You know, that might be the word of the Lord that comes to them. And it's done through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit on the believer to interact with the unsaved. In addition, if you stop and think about it, I mean, do you have any idea how evil this world would be without the Holy Spirit restraining the evil? I mean, his omnipresence is like an... Uh, an envelope of righteousness around this world, a living, invisible restraint that evil cannot put away. I mean, he is basically the spiritual policeman who, after convicting the world of sin and righteousness and judgment, arrests them for what they've done. The example of this is uh, Saul or the Apostle Paul and his conversion. Uh, how about your own example? How did, how did Jesus, how did the Holy Spirit come into your life and witness to you to make you, or to offer you, I should say, the invitation to receive Jesus as your Savior? I mean, circumstances for many people, probably more than 70% of the people, they come to the Lord through some adversity. Something's going on in their life. They've hit rock bottom. They can't go any lower. And that's when they cry out to God. I, I'll raise my hand on that one. I, that's where he got a hold of me. That's where he invaded my life, as my pastor Terry Turbin says. He just invaded my life. You know, I said, okay, Lord, uh, you know, come on in. And he did. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Spirit takes scriptures and makes them clear to us. It's called the ministry of illumination. He also takes uh, circumstances in which we find ourselves and gives us insight to either overcome them or use them to our advantage. He takes pleasures and predicaments and uses them to mature us. I mean, how, imagine if everything you wanted came to pass. Everything. I want a million dollars. No problem. There you go. I want a brand new house. You got it. I want a brand new car. You got it. I want to be popular. You got it. I want new clothes. You got it. I want a son and a daughter, and I want them to be perfect. Well, okay, you got it. But when everything is perfect and provided for you, that is the moment when you've been deceived. When you have, you know, I, I'm just like God. I mean, I say it, and I get it. I create it out of nothing just like he did. You know, everything's perfect in my life. I got the perfect wife. I got the perfect life. I got the perfect car, the perfect dog, perfect kids. Everything is perfect. Well, that's when the devil can slip in. One, a, a biblical example, everything was perfect, God said, in the Garden of Eden. His entire creation was perfect. And then the the snake slithered in and deceived the woman and it all fell apart. You know, that's what happens with us. If we are perfect, then the Holy Spirit really isn't working in our life. We're thinking we are the ones who are doing this. Adversity comes to strengthen that backbone. Adversity comes, think of a weightlifter. You know, when someone first starts lifting late, weights, they may only weigh 160 pounds soaking wet. But if they get into the weightlifting lifestyle, they'll put on 20 pounds of muscle. And it's all because the resistance that they 
we're facing on a daily basis, lifting those weights, it's resistance. And you learn to overcome resistance. And by overcome resistance, that makes you strong. So if you're going through some adversity right now, praise God for it. Don't thank him for the circumstances. Thank him that he is making you strong enough to stand. Because if you're still standing right now with what you're going through, I don't know what it is. Somebody watching this video is going through something right now that you need deliverance on now. You need a miracle now. You need Jesus right now. And this circumstance is so great that you don't see any way out. But when you ask Jesus, in, it may not be today or tomorrow or the next day, but he is working on the plan for your deliverance. I guarantee it. Amen. So when you're facing these circumstances and you're, you're pushing them back, you are applying as much resistance to it as you, as you possibly can. Is when the Holy Spirit will invade your life and you'll see a supernatural reaction start to take place. And when that happens, next time some resistance comes, you remember, this is what Jesus did last time. What he did once, he'll do again. That does not mean that if you fall into the same sin pattern that created this event, again, you receive the same kind of deliverance. No. The Holy Spirit is fluid and he's moving with every situation and every person and every believer. I mean, this time you walk into the bank and they are so glad to see you. Next time you walk in, you get a clerk who could care less. She's there for the paycheck. Next time you walk into the restaurant that you just love, you go there at least once a month. I got a restaurant I try to go to once a month because it is so awesome. And if you walk in one time and, and the food isn't cooked right, you get up and never come back? No, somebody may have had a bad day. Maybe they are lacking a couple of ingredients that you're used to. So it tastes different. But the intent is that they're trying to minister to you. Even in a restaurant, you're being ministered to. The waiter is bringing you food. When you go shopping, the store clerk is ministering to you. The cashier is ministering to you. When you go to the, uh, the hospital, the nursing staff and all the support staff, they're ministering to you. There are people behind the scenes ministering to you. When you go to church, your pastor is being, is they minister to you, representing Jesus. When you go to the Lord in prayer, it's the Holy Spirit who is ministering to you. What's your one number one job, the main job? What is the main thing you need to do when you're being ministered to? Just receive it and thank him for it. Because when you do that, ha, 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 when you start to realize that you're being ministered to constantly, no matter what, I mean, if you're watching television, you're being ministered to by that TV company, cable company, etc. Whenever you accomplish anything, it's because you're being ministered to by someone who's being directed by the Holy Spirit. When you realize that, then you can just praise God because you're blessed in all that you do.